Hey all, um, this is going to be a video talking through seatbelt ideas for the Osmobile. This is not a how-to, this is not that this is the right way. This is me kind of thinking out loud, so don't take this as a how-to, don't take this as gospel that it's the right way, but here's some ideas. I'm going to put out a second video if I do this, showing me installing the seatbelts. So if that video never shows up, then this didn't work. But basically, working with the Osmobile, I want to put three-point belts in the car for the front seat, and for the back seat, for the obvious safety reasons. Um, the car right now has no belts. I could just put lap belts in, those would be easy, but that's a really great way to eat a dashboard or a steering wheel. So I wanna put a proper three-point belt setup in. So what this is gonna be is me sort of talking through how I plan to do that. The rear seat is gonna be fairly easy because what I'm gonna do, I can't mount a retractor here because it's too far forward for the rear seat. So what I'm gonna do instead is have an opening in that package shelf back there and mount some sort of guide for a belt. And then the retractor itself, this unit, is gonna get mounted to the rear tire well inside the trunk with a reinforcing plate so that the belt will come up. That'll give me the proper three-point setup. It's not perfect because if there's a tall adult in the back seat, it won't quite be high enough. You need to have it above your shoulder to avoid spinal compression, but it'll be good for kids in the back seat and it'll be okay for the occasional adult who may ride back there. Now the front seat, I have a bigger problem, which is this lovely opening over here. Because while I love this aesthetically, it's beautiful to have this wide open space, it screws you up for the seat belts because normally you'd have a pillar here and that's what you'd mount your belt to. And if I had that, no problem. Put a reinforcing plate in that pillar with a bolt on it, drill a hole into the cover for that pillar, I'd have a three-point belt set up in here, no problem. But I can't do that here. Um, a lot of suggestions are to mount it low and further back. In this car, one, I have a door there, but even if I wanted to mount it to the door, that's the problem of height comes into it. Because I'm, as you can see, well above this seat so if the belt comes up and over and I'm in a crash and get thrown forward, it basically compresses your spine with that belt and it causes spinal compression. It causes damage to your spine. So it needs to be above your spine and behind, or it needs to be above your, and behind your shoulder. The logical place to put it is right here in line with where the windows are. But if I do that, it doesn't hit me right. You can see, if I'm holding the belt there, it doesn't actually hit me until it gets down to my gut. So that's obviously not gonna work. Now moving it back, that basically solves the problem. It's not perfect. It kind of cuts me in the neck just a little bit, but it's far, far better than it would be otherwise. And I'm gonna have to have a compromise in here. So not the nicest thing here, a little bit more risk to the collarbone. I will take that risk. The problem is if I put in a three-point belt with the little thingy here that redirects it to drop the retractor down. Now, one, this is ugly. I don't, you know, this just looks ugly. Also, it interferes with the rear window. It interferes with the rear passenger getting in and out of the car. It causes a bunch of extra problems. So here's my bit of trying to be clever, which is <laughs> find the right piece in all of this. Ah, flip to another one. This is the wrong belt end. They, they sent me the wrong kit. This should be longer to fit a bench seat. But this is what gave me the idea, which is to mount this here. Reinforcing bolt, same place, and a magnet here. So that, and I'll show you in a minute my little example of this. So that this stays up here when it's out of the way. And then when I want to use the belt, what I would do is I would have a normal retractor down here to the, my left. Then I would pull the belt up, click it into one of these down over here. And then I would a second female or male end, not female end, male end, I would have a second insertable end. Let's actually be much more gender proper about this. Um, I have a second insertable end down here on a retractor that I would then pull up and click in. I was talking through this with my partner and she pointed out something really important, which is putting this here puts this at head smash and range if I get in an accident I'll bang into a big piece of chrome 
So what I would do is get a different version of this that's longer that would bring the belt end down to somewhere on my chest so that I'd click in like that in the retractor, obviously. So what I would end up with is one, two, three point set belt setup, but with two belts. And it adds a step, but it doesn't add a really big step because you pull across, you click in, right there's the other belt. You reach that up, you reach this, and you put it in. Old cars are always going to have compromises. This is a compromise I think is going to work. And the fact that I will have that end up here out of the way, with, like I said, a magnet to hold the other end in place, seems like it'll solve the aesthetic problem of there being nothing interfering with this shape. I'll have a proper safety three-point belt, and it won't be a royal pain to use. Um, GMs in the early to mid-70s, when they had to put three-point belts in their cars, and they were still selling hardtops, they had this same problem. In those cases, they were all two-door, other hardtops were two-doors, and the belt hanging down where it should basically made the rear seat inaccessible. So their solution was to have a very long piece. I'm trying to find all my bits here. Like this, but even longer. Up here, held in by two little clips. And it actually had to fold back to fit in the clip because it came down most of the way. And then that would hang down, and then you'd have a manual seat belt that it would click into and you'd have to pull it tight. And that was the, the second belt. They didn't work well because either it just stayed in those clips, nobody used it, they used the lap belt, they ignored it completely, or this just kind of hung down awkwardly and got caught in the door and fell out the window and blew it. And if you drove without the belt on and the windows down, it would fly all over the place. So I'm thinking that having the same basic idea, but using a magnet up here to keep it out of the way when I'm not using it, and also using a retractor so I don't have to manually adjust the belt every time, will make it just easier enough to use and less pain in the ass to make it a thing that's worth using rather than installing once and then ignoring and only using the lap belt. So that's my idea. I'm going to cut right now and show you the magnet thing just real quick so you get a clear idea of what I'm talking about and shows that it works. So this is my little belt example that I was talking about. This would be that permanent mount location and then just, you know, on a, like this is mostly what I wanted to be able to show you is that like it goes up very easily. You don't have to like place it carefully and it's solid enough. I have to give it a good yank. Like I use at least this big a magnet. Um, so yeah, like that seems like it'd be a very easy thing to unbelt yourself and just kind of swing it up out of the way. And then it's out of my way. It's out of everybody's way. It's out of, aesthetically out of the way. And because the other end retracts, that also gets itself out of the way as well. And then what I want is feedback on this. Like, does this sound I fear I might be being so clever I'm coming back around into stupid. So that's what I'm trying to follow up with. It's like, is this smart? Is this stupid? Does this seem like it'll work? Like, what are other ideas you might have for solving this three-point belt problem? So yeah, let me know. And um, we'll go forward from there. And I'll put out another video either talking about things that people have brought up or just me starting to do this once I get the right belts as I said these are the wrong ones the company sent me the wrong belts but we're gonna be going forward on this I have not been working on the Oldsmobile a bunch lately I'm back in another like sort of accumulate some parts stage my neighbor across the streets doing um woodwork but um I am slowly working on it right now the biggest problem is I'm still trying to strip all that damn bed liner off it's not bed liner actually I take that back I finally figured out what it is. I thought it was the cheap bed liner. What it is is Plastidip. People Plastidip their cars. They did it to this, but they did such a bad job of it. It's not peeling off the way Plastidip covered cars are supposed to. So I'm still working at it. I'm chipping away at it. It's getting there, but that's slowing down the whole process as well as um, some other just household stuff and whatnot. So I am working on the car. I'm going to keep working on the car. I'm going to keep putting out videos, but I can't guarantee when the next one will be. Anyway. Thank you for watching. I'll talk to you next time. Bye. Hey all, I got a new camera.